Okay, today is chapter 5.1, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We're going to start off with the definition. So A is an n by n matrix. It's a square matrix, and the constant, we call this lambda, the constant lambda is said to be an eigenvalue of A if there exists a non-zero eigenvector, the, the, the eigenvector we'll call x, such that a times x is equal to lambda x. And we have lambda is my eigenvalue, and my x is my eigenvector. Notice that the vector x is a multiple of a scalar. So it's dependent. So in order to find eigenvectors and eigenvalues, we're going to start off with this equation. We want 0 on one side. So I'm going to subtract lambda x. And we're going to go ahead and right factor out that eigenvector. Now when you pull out this lambda, it's a constant. If you want to be able to subtract lambda from a, we are going to have to multiply that by identity matrix. Just a note, I could have gone either way with this zero. And so if I had um, subtracted ax to the other side, I could also have. So this is fine to use also. Some books use it. Um, even though the book that I'm using uses this formula, I actually prefer the one that I started off with. We do also want to point out, though, that x doesn't equal to 0. We just don't want to deal with x being 0. It's the trivial case. It's not really important. So we define, it was defined up here to be an x is non, a non-zero vector. The last thing to point out is we're going to have a matrix here times x equals 0. x is our eigen vector, so you can also see that the eigenvector is the null space or the solution space. So now I'd like to write out a theorem. If A is a square matrix and lambda is the eigenvalue of A, then it satisfies the determinant of A minus lambda I equals zero. Since, and then the reason is, since this cannot equal to zero, as I mentioned before, then that only makes sense that the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. So we can use that to actually find our eigenvalues, and this is how we're going to do it. So it's quite simple, actually. Um, we are just going to find the determinant of the matrix a minus lambda i. We're going to set it equal to zero. And then we have an equation that we can solve for lambda. Lambda will be our unknown. And then once you found lambda, those lambdas are your eigenvalues. After you've done that, we want to be able to find eigenvectors. So for each eigenvalue, we'll find the corresponding eigenvector by plugging the lambda that we find into this matrix. And then we'll solve a minus lambda ix equals 0. Basically, we'll solve the solution space or the null space of this equation. So let's do an example. So for our first step, we're going to find the determinant and then set it equal to 0 to find our eigenvalues. So A and I, there's my, let's go ahead and find that. We'll multiply in my lambda 
and then subtract term by term. And this is my a minus lambda i. So we'll get faster at it. Basically, since we're multi since we are multiplying lambda to the identity matrix, we will only be subtracting uh, lambda from our diagonal. Let's go ahead and find the determinant of that. Find the determinant. Set it equal to zero. And then solve. So notice we had a two by two and we did get two eigenvalues. Now let's find the corresponding eigenvectors. One at a time for lambda equals one. We plug in to a minus lambda i, and then we solve the null space. So our for lambda equals one, we're going to plug it into there. Remember, we're solving a minus lambda i x equals zero. So there's my setup. We can augment it. That is my zero vector. So my what I have here is my equation. We can use x plus y equals zero. Set y equal to t x is minus y, which is minus t. And my vector x, y is my solution. x is minus t. y is t. And we can sub-index it if we want for lambda equals 1. And for our next one, Lambda is 2. Same thing. We're going to plug 2 into lambda and solve it. the solution space for that equation. This is my a minus lambda i for lambda equal 2. I plug that in. x equals 0. I want to solve the solution space. We can augment it. 3 minus 2 looks like, and you can show the steps if you want, but I know these are opposites. I'm just going to add those two together. Get a row of zeros. I don't know if you've noticed, but we will always get a dependent solution. I'll talk about that more in a sec. And here's my solution. Here's my solution. We'll set y equal to t. And then it's minus 2t. y is t. And that's my second eigenvector for corresponding eigenvalue of 2. Just a note on this dependent system that we just created. And the reason is we're using that determinant is zero. That's how we built it. We built the system that it's dependent. So that's kind of a check when you're finding the eigenvectors. If you don't get a row of zeros, something went wrong. Okay. One more check that we can use, which is actually kind of neat, is the trace. Just in words, it's the sum of the diagonal entries. And our last check that we got our eigenvalues right is at the sum. So the fact is 
that the sum of your eigenvalues, if you add up your eigenvalues, it does equal to the trace. So in our last example, we had lambda, lambda 1 equal 1, lambda 2 is equal to 2. So the sum of the eigenvalues is 3. And our A, our matrix, I forgot what it was, original matrix, not the A minus lambda I. And as you can see here, my trace of A is 3 plus 0 equals 3. They do match. So there's really no reason to get your eigenvalues wrong if you're checking with the trace before you find your eigenvectors. And then when you find your eigenvectors, always make sure that you have a dependent system. Otherwise, you could have made a mistake. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks. My next video, I'll do eigenvalues of a 3 by 3